So today we begin the first day of our novena to the Holy Spirit. And one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a gift of fortitude. In order to lift out the Christian life, especially to witness to our Lord, you need to have great fortitude. Fortitude is indispensable, especially if you are in leadership. And so, we read in today's first reading, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, do not be afraid to speak up, or not allow yourself to be silenced. I am with you. Having fortitude is the way in which we can carry out the mission of Christ. But where can we find fortitude? How do we find courage, especially when we are speaking the truth, when we have to do the right thing? We know that this world is very complex. We have oppositions from every possible area in life. When we try to do the right thing, we will always be opposed. Sometimes even by our own fellow brothers and sisters, because of disagreement, because of misunderstanding. But the greatest challenge, of course, for us is when we try to lift out the gospel in our life, when we try to lift out the gospel values which are not accepted by the world. So how can we be strong in our faith? The first thing, I think, for fortitude in life is to know that someone is at your side. Someone is with you. We can never travel this journey alone. We never assume all the burdens of this life by ourselves. We are not an island. We need the advocate, as Jesus promised his disciples. We need our friends, our loved ones to support us. And that is the reason why if you have found someone, a helpmate, a confidant, a good friend who will support you, you will never cave in to pressure in life. You will never fall into depression. You will never give up hope. You will not fall into despair. People who fall into despair are those who try to resolve all their issues in life alone. They have no one to support them. They feel that the whole world is on their shoulder. And so, of course, they collapsed. So it is important, therefore, that we should always be receptive to those angels and messengers the Lord has sent into our life. We need friends. We need people to support us. We must never be too proud to know and to rely on others. Not so much to depend on them, but we need their encouragement. We need their consolation. We need their prayers. Sometimes we need their views on certain things that we do. And this is so beautiful if you have a helpmate. That is why those of us who are married, we should never fail to be helpmate to each other, especially to our spouse. The most important gift that is given to married couples, of course, is their spouse. You should try to develop your relationship with your spouse in such a way that your spouse is your best friend. Your spouse who understands you, who accepts you, who loves you, and who will support you in good times and in bad. It is always destructive and it is actually a tragic failure in relationship when the spouse becomes our enemy and the spouse becomes the main opponent in our life. This happens so often. And that is why the family breaks apart. People fall into despair. But it is not enough just to rely on our brothers and sisters. They are good, they are important, but we know they are never perfect in love. They have their weaknesses, they have their strength, Sometimes they are supportive, sometimes they are not so supportive. We don't expect them to be supportive all the time. 
So that is why we also need to depend on God. On God who will be the source of our strength. Because ultimately, we cannot carry out the mission of our Lord depending on our strength alone. And that is why although Paul himself has many supporters, he needed the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him in the vision. I am with you. And it's so consoling that at the end of the gospel, on the Feast of the Ascension, Jesus says, I will be with you until the end of time. And to know that the Lord is present in our lives, in our struggles, that gives us strength. That even when we are being opposed, we are misunderstood, we will find a strength because we know that there is a supernatural, there is a superpower, there is this divine presence guiding us, holding us up in times of trials, in times of challenges. And so this is where it is important that we need to rely on God. We need to turn to Him in prayers and to find confidence in Him. But this confidence in the Lord's presence, of course, is dependent also on your faith in the resurrection. That is why those people, if you don't believe in the resurrection of our Lord, that is very difficult to trust in Him, very difficult to surrender your lives to Him. And it's for this reason that the resurrection of our Lord is the most important doctrine, most important dogma. If you don't believe in the resurrection of the Lord, everything else collapses. But if you believe in the resurrection of the Lord, then you know that the Lord is with you. And that is what Jesus assures the disciples who were sad because they were going away. But if the Lord is with you, even when you are suffering, when you are in trouble and misunderstood, you notice that all the apostles, the martyrs, and all those people who love God, even in suffering, there is a certain joy in them. That's why Jesus told the disciples, I shall see you again and your hearts will be full of joy, and that joy no one shall take from you. When the day comes, you will not ask me any question. It is a joy that comes from our heart, a joy that comes from our union with Jesus, a joy that comes from knowing that we have done the right thing and that we have not given in to fear in our lives. So having this joy is important, the joy that we are doing what is right. And that is why today in the Gospel also, Jesus speaks about this joy, this expectant joy as well. And that will give us courage. You know, sometimes when we are going through uh, difficulties, when we carry certain burdens, uh, burdens for our children, especially when they are growing up. And you, we know so well today that uh, young people, when they grow up, their life is uh, very difficult. Oh, they have so many issues, you know, maturity issues, emotional issues. They have to face the world. They have to face their friends. They have to compete with the rest of society. Many problems. Huh? Don't think that young people don't have issues. They have many issues. Insecurity. They don't know who they are, where they stand, whether their peers will accept them, whether mommy and daddy loves them. All these kinds of issues. So that's why a young person actually in today's world is very challenging. Of course, the parents will have to suffer with them. Huh? Parents will have to see them through and to suffer with them. And sometimes they confuse the parents as much as the parents confuse them. So, I mean, trying to find a way to resolve and to help them, it is really a big challenge. And yet we know that when we struggle through, we believe that the hope before us is there. Then we struggle. And when we struggle through, we know that the sacrifices that we have put in, the pain that we go through will not be given in vain. We know, we have confidence that at the end of the day, things will work out well. That should be our confidence. And so we continue to give. And when the time comes, when we look back, we say, thank God, you know, for giving me the grace, the strength to endure and to continue to give. Never give up hope. 
especially on our loved ones, on our children, never give up hope. When we give up hope, means to say that we no longer believe in the power of God, in the presence of God. So it is important, therefore, that when we want to continue to stand up for Jesus, then it is important for us that we must be ready to bring Jesus into our hearts. There is also another thing that is important in terms of faith, in terms of fortitude. You know, every suffering, pain that we carry, we must believe that the resurrection is the ultimate. Many of us, we fear life simply because we are afraid of death. And so it's very important for us Christians, the strength that comes from God ultimately is to overcome our fear of death. If you overcome the fear of death, you overcome everything. And I think it's very important that when we speak of the fear of death, it is important for us to try to understand that when we no longer fear death and we understand that death is a transition in life, we will do everything. So the question is, have you overcome the fear of death? Separation one day will come. Our loved ones will have to go away. We must be ready for that. And we are are ready Then, when the time comes, we will be able to accept what is happening. And I think it's very important because if you fear death, then you will be always living with great anxiety. So, no need to fear death, but I think we need to try to live our life as fully as we can, giving ourselves as fully as we can at every moment. And there will be challenges, there will be trials. When they come, let us deal with them as they come. And then if it cannot be overcome, like suppose you have a terminal illness, then we just resign ourselves to the Lord. I mean, that is what the Lord wills. Because at the end of the day, if you believe and truly believe in the resurrection, then you know that you are going to be with the Lord. And hopefully, your loved ones one day will also join you. And so with a kind of faith and confidence in the resurrection of the Lord, we will be able to truly live a life of great joy every day, eh? even in sorrow, in difficulties, just live a life of joy. I always believe, eh? just dance with the Lord, eh? just dance with the Lord. You've got these problems, try to do what you can, and the Lord will supply you the rest of the grace.